coalition to look at the future of, of counseling again. We need the associations to initiate it. We shouldn't have to. I mean, what are associations for? What are professional associations for except to look after their profession? They're not social clubs. They're not places where people pad their vitas. They need to be places where people care about what is happening to their profession and start to do something about it. We need that, I think, now. We needed it 10 years ago, but we definitely need it now. We have licensure. We aren't sitting pretty. What's the future hold for us? We need to be thinking about that seriously, not just as I have time kind of thing. So uh, we, we, now we weren't nearly as successful in this coalition as I hope we would be. We got people <coughs> fired up and they went down and, and uh, talked to their legislator about, in fact, we thought we had, I, can, I have in many of these artifacts I have, I have a copy of an 80-20 bill that somebody even had the Legislative Service Commission draft for us. And we thought we had the chair of the Education Committee who was going to introduce it. We worked hours and hours trying to get this guy to introduce it. And after you know, he did his appropriate, whatever he had to do to placate, one of the people that was with us was in his district and had given money to him and so on, but not a lot, because he was an educator, not a lot. But they'd given some money to him. And uh, we thought we were going to get him, but he said no, because he believed in local control of the schools. If the principal wanted the counselor to do something else, that was okay. That's what the, the principal should be able to do it. So schools are a very different milieu in which to work. They're a very different milieu in which to work. So we weren't as successful as we had hoped we would be, but that's one thing that happened, and it's something that we can learn from. We can learn that maybe there's other ways to do it besides, you can do a coalition, get, you've got to get people to collaborate. That's what a coalition was about, getting people to come together and collaborate and go at it from all different sides. And that's what we were trying to do, although, as I say, we did not achieve what we had hoped to achieve at that particular point. Now we did get some victories later, and we'll talk about that. This is what I said, we mentioned that the coalition had, had tried to do. We again, I mean, with the one that I had up there just a minute ago, we were again trying to get rid of the teaching experience. Why should she have to be a teacher? Yeah, if she gets trained as a clinical counselor, then someplace down the line here, she decides that she wants to go in and work with kids in the school. Why shouldn't she be able to do that? She's a highly trained individual. Why shouldn't any of you that want to work in a school be able to work in a school? Why should some arbitrary thing like teaching experience keep you out of the school. It makes no sense. And there's no research that supports it. So we were, we were thinking about how we could open up our field and begin to pull in to all aspects of counseling, the best people that we could pull in. We were turned down again and again and again by the Ohio Department of Ed. If you want to find a, an organization, that um, an entity, an establishment that is Old, old school. O-D-E is where it is. <laughs> and it is old, old. In their thinking, in their rules, in their regulation, old, old. Now over the last several years, they're trying to change. And I hope they can. But it's very hard to reform yourself. And so when it's only educators reforming educators, I'm not sure that, and when it's educators reforming counseling, I'm not sure there's, there's much hope for the kind of change that maybe some of us would like to see. Now, so we had gone twice, I personally had gone twice, and others had too, to testify in front of committees at the Ohio Department of Ed to get rid of the teaching experience. Mm -hmm. And we would say, hey, look, we cite the, the research do everything we could to convince them. And it was always a polite, no thank you. These things are going to stay as they are. Or in that one instance, as I told you, went from one to three years, kind of like, hey, you know? 
Come back again anytime you want. We'll do what the heck we want. You know, it doesn't make any difference what faction you're in. We'll do what we want. So in 1998, and I had decided then at that point, no way, it's not going to happen. We are never going to get rid of the teaching experiment. In 1998, there was a national movement in school counseling called Transforming School Counseling. And this national movement wanted to change the way counselors were being trained. Because one of the things that's happened, as I said before, is now a lot of the counselor educators, and there's several of them here, and you probably want to throw something at me when I'm done, I'm sorry. But these, this is how I feel, and I was invited to. <laughs> so I'll take it out on David. <laughs> but the, this, this group says, hey, look, they're training school counselors only to see individual clients. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got a caseload, now it's not, it's more than 400 to one. There's no student to counselor ratio, so it could be 1,000 to one in some middle schools. You can't carry 35 students a week and not see anybody else. I mean, that's not the way it works. Schools are not going to tolerate that. So they're saying, look, we need people that can teach counselors in internship and practicum to do group counseling, that can go in and do group guidance in a classroom, that understand that they need to work with their, all their community resources, the mental health centers, the churches, whoever they can get to help them work with kids. They need to be people who can reach out and broker services from the community. So the counselor educators or counselor ed institutions were invited to submit a proposal to uh, the Education Trust, which is a nonprofit group out of Washington, D.C., who believes that a lot of kids are getting shafted in schools, particularly minorities. So we decided that at Ohio State to write a proposal. We wrote a proposal. We were one of the, one of the six institutions funded. And I wrote in the proposal that we would get, we would bring in to counseling people who did not have teaching experience. We would somehow get it waived in the state of Ohio. And my colleagues just laughed at me. And then frankly, I kind of laughed at myself. I thought, dummy, you've been this road twice, you failed two times. You know, what's make, what makes you think you'll win this one? Went to the Ohio Department of Ed, talked to Ed Whitfield at the time, and uh, Ed said, we can't give a waiver to Ohio State. They'll think that you're getting treated as a favorite. It's favoritism if we give a waiver to Ohio State. You've got to get more people than that. So I got Tom Davis from OU. I got Don Bubenzer from Penn State. I got Marty Ritchie from the University of Toledo. And I got Bill Nemec from, at that point, he was at Kent State. And we went back to the eye department. And for the very first time, there looked like there was an opening. Mm -hmm. So we fought for the next three years on this issue, and we got the teaching, we got an alternate, we didn't get the teaching experience waived, we got an alternate path to school counseling that does not require <coughs> teaching experience. It does not require teaching experience. So it was all that time. It was all that time. And I and I like to use that example mainly because see we started in the early 80s. It became, I mean, it was passed in 2001 and took effect in 2003. But look how long that is to get that change that seemed perfectly rational. Perfectly rational change. So uh, so now Ohio is one of the states in which you do not have to have a teaching experience. So uh, uh, anyway, third attempt. But one of the key one of the key uh, groups was Oasis, and it was a guy that was president of Oasis one year, and then left the field. Gary Lacy. You may not even know, him, uh, but he was he was great for us because he um, you know he worked with us the whole way. And, uh, and, and he happened to be a minority. Mm. And it was so helpful to have an African-American man go down and testify right along with us. Mm. And, and then there was one student at Ohio State in her late 30s 
that, that with the Ohio Department of, uh, or the Ohio Board of Education meetings and talked about how she had worked at the Environmental Protection Agency in Ohio. She had supervised 37 people. She had had a very successful career there. But she now couldn't be a school counselor because she didn't have teaching experience. And I think the stupidity of that requirement began to be very, very clear to the Ohio Board of Education. And particularly at the same time, they were loosening the standards for people that would be teachers. So the timing was right, and, and that, that would, it worked out well. I'm going to shift focus. Well, they, they did also, not an important thing, they did also recognize KCREP at that time, mm -hmm. which they had never recognized KCREP before. That's probably more important to some of us as council educators, but um, I'm going to go past this one a little bit. And um, oh, what, what um, the school counselors have done in the last couple years that's important is when the Ohio Court was passed, which really ratcheted up graduation requirements, they did get in language inserted that said they will strengthen um, career and educational counseling programs. Now, you know, the state doesn't have any money to do almost anything right now, so that's not happening. Additionally, in 2009, in the Governor's Ed, with Governor Strickland's Ed Reform Plan, uh, a ratio of 1 to 250 was put in the Ed Reform, put in the Governor's Ed Reform Plan reform plan and it was passed but again there's no money to really implement some of the, the reform that the governor did get enacted so right now that that's nowhere but if money if the economy comes back and the state comes back then maybe there'll be some money for something do you think that if they do enact, enact that 250 to 1 ratio that you're going to see more school counselors you know, I'll tell you what I used to tell my students all the time. One of the, my responsibilities when I was at Ohio State full time was to teach career counseling. Mm -hmm. I love career counseling. Career counseling is one way to reach anybody, and everybody wants career counseling. I mean, the parents love career counseling. And that's great for their kids. <laughs> you know, that's what they want. Get my kid on track. You know, that's what they want. People want career counseling. They need career counseling. Career counseling is a wonderful entree in the door. And you see everything else after you've met with a client for a while. And so I think we've missed the boat in, in using career sometimes as an entree to other, ser other serious problems of kid. But it's very hard to remove, remove stigma. Some of you may remember, uh, wasn't it Sy um, Symington? Simonton, who was the vice presidential candidate that ran uh, on the Democratic ticket oh. years ago, probably 30 years Schreiber? ago? Schreiber? And he... Um, was it Sergeant Schreiber? Uh, no, it no. wasn't Schreiber, okay. but I can't... Well... I know who you Anyway, there, it, I'm sorry that I, I apologize for bringing up something I can't recall, but what, what he... Basically, what came out as he was running was that he had had... He had, had Going to a, psychi a psychologist, I think, for depression. And uh, my gosh, how could anybody be qualified to be a candidate for vice president if he had had depression? And so he ended up getting off the ticket uh, after you know a period of time. There's a lot of stigma. It's very hard to, to counteract. But you know, one thing you've got to do first, I think, is you've got to have the best people in your profession you can. And I don't care where they're going to counsel, they need to be good. And that's one thing we can all do something about. And I, I think counseling and the credibility of counseling will come uh, if we can do that. So, um, I'm moving on to mental health counseling because I'm not, I'm not watching my clock. I'm just kind of